Hi, I'm Dwight Williams, pastor of New Life Presbyterian Church in Omaha, Nebraska. We are glad to be worshiping together with you today. Today we will be celebrating the sacrament of the Lord's Supper during worship, so at any time you can pause this video, go and get some kind of bread or cracker, some kind of drink, and resume our worship together. A couple of good announcements. On Friday, our fellowship hall was used for a Red Cross blood drive, and we are pleased to announce that they collected 34 units of blood. That is great news. We want to congratulate Pat Rudiger on her retirement from Omaha Public Schools. If you wish to send her a card, she can be reached at 2023 North 51st Street, 68104. New Life Presbyterian is a collection point for community donations. If you would like to help others, we ask you to bring non-perishable food items, plus toilet paper, paper towels. We are collecting these items on Mondays between noon and 1 p.m. New Life Presbyterian Church will not be having worship inside our sanctuary until the session is sure that it is safe for us to worship closely together. But we do need your help this summer. We want your suggestions for a favorite hymn or a favorite scripture, and I will weave those together, your suggestions, into worship and preach on that scripture or hymn. So call me or email or send a suggestion in the mail. If you are in need of pastoral care, please call me or Pat Tools is our, our clerk of session, Carolyn Grice, or any of the other elders on session. Let us now worship God. To all who are weary and seek rest, to all who mourn and long for comfort, to all who sin and need a savior, to all who hunger and thirst after righteousness, to all who would serve the living God, to all who rejoice that God through Christ Jesus has brought them salvation and abundant life, welcome in the name of Christ. Let us affirm our faith using our mission statement. We believe we are called to be a congregation of diverse backgrounds, ages, and races, bound together by the love of God as God's servants, partners, and missionaries in sharing God's love. We believe we are called to be a sign of hope in our community, to bring new life to the world, and to give our lives as a channel of the Holy Spirit, providing spiritual leadership in the community, and involving others in caring for God and neighbors. We believe we are called to be preachers and doers of God's word through worship, study, fellowship, and involvement in and for all, both here and worldwide. Please join me in our call to worship. Grace and peace to you in the name of our God, the maker of all things, the one who knit our very beings together. We come to worship this God whose greatness is beyond our power to fully know, and yet who knows us right well. We come to worship the God who knows not only the farthest reaches of the galaxy, but also the hidden places of our hearts. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We gather to worship in the name of this Christ who walked among us, bringing God's word of love to all who were forgotten, God's word of grace to all who were broken, and God's word of life to all who face death. We worship in Christ's name that we might live as his people. Grace and peace to you by the living power of the Holy Spirit, moving in our midst to inspire and to guide, to bring forth new life in the world. As we worship, we open our hearts and our lives to this Spirit, that we may choose wisely, live rightly, and serve compassionately. Our New Testament lesson for today comes from the letter to the Ephesian church, reading a few verses from chapter 1, verses 3 through 8. Listen for God's word. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. 
And now our Old Testament lesson, it comes from the prophet Isaiah, reading from chapter 43, and these words are wonderful and amazing. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Isaiah 43, what an amazing, reassuring scripture. In the opening verse, it says that God has created us, formed us, redeemed us, and called us. One of the commentaries I read said that this is an oracle of redemption. And in those seven short verses, we see God's redemption in a sweeping panorama of time and space. Redemption for Israel's past and present and future and not Israel alone, salvation is a matter of cosmic proportions. The geographical sweep of verses 5 through 6, where all of the points of the compass are mentioned, casts in spatial terms the comprehensive nature of God's saving activity. The seventh and final verse of today's reading uses three of those four verbs that we heard in the first verse. We are called, we are created, we are formed by God, and we take heart that God knows us intimately and loves us and saves us. God has staked a claim on our lives, and we are indeed treasured children of God. I don't know if you have ever traveled with teenagers, but if you have, you probably have learned the intricacies of who sits where in the car or the van. Do you know the protocol? It's very complex. If you're a teenager and you want to sit in the front seat, the front passenger seat, you have to be the first one to yell, shotgun! And if you are first, then you have staked a claim to that front passenger seat. Unless, of course, someone else is sitting in the shotgun seat, and then when everyone gets out, if that person yells, seat back, then everyone gets their old seat back, and you can't yell shotgun. The claim has already been made. In Isaiah chapter 43, God has a big start. God has claimed it. God has yelled out, and God lays claim to us, and there is no changing seats. We are God's own, chosen, named, claimed. There's a musical rendition of Isaiah 43 that you might know. Actually, if you were a Roman Catholic, you would definitely know this song. It's called, Be Not Afraid, and it's the favorite of millions of people. The chorus goes like this. Be not afraid, I go before you always, come follow me, and I will give you rest. That song was written by Jesuit father Bob Duffield, who at one time was campus minister at Creighton University. It was 1972, and Father Dufford was not a father yet. He was on a Jesuit retreat, preparing to be ordained and grappling with anxiety about his future. Where would he go? What sort of work would he do as a priest? Would he be any good at it? And so Bob Dufford started writing, Be Not Afraid, when he was, well, he was afraid. The song was published and distributed in 1975, and he doesn't remember if there was an immediate response, but eventually he started to get letters, hundreds and hundreds of letters. One woman wrote to him about her husband, 
who was an alcoholic, and the family would pray for him every day and sing, Be Not Afraid. The good news is the man finally joined Alcoholics Anonymous. Another woman heard the song at her husband's funeral and said that it carried her through her grief. The second stanza comes right from Isaiah 43. If you pass through raging waters in the sea, you shall not drown. If you walk amid the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand before the power of hell, and death is at your side, Know that I am with you through it all. Father Duffer has received hundreds of testimonials of how this song has spoken to people in times of need. Susan Mitchell, hospice chaplain, wrote him to say that she sang this song to many people as they neared their death. She says, I sang it through my tears to my own mother on her deathbed in 2013. Thank you. This is not a song just about God protecting us from every harm, but that God accompanies us on every dangerous journey. The most humbling moment for Father Dufford came when he learned that Sister Helen Prejean, who is known for her work to end the death penalty, often sang, Be Not Afraid, to inmates on death row. Sister Prejean is portrayed by Susan Sarandon in the 1995 movie Dead Man Walking, and she sings, Be Not Afraid. If you stand before the gates of hell and death is at your side, know that I am with you through it all. It's one of the film's most moving scenes. The song Be Not Afraid fills our souls with hope and love that God is with us through every storm. This is how deeply God knows you and cares for you. You have an individual fingerprint. You are an individual, only you, and God knows you inside and out. God knows who you are. God blesses you. Well, what about someone who is in an accident and loses their hands or fingers or, or is born without arms? How can we know who a person is? Well, footprints. Those are also individual. My birth certificate has these little tiny footprints on it, so I can be identified as the one individual, marvelous creation of God. But what about someone without feet? Eyeballs. Your retina is individual. There is absolutely no one else like you. Now, is that it? Oh, DNA. You can be identified as the one and only you by scientists. Is there any other way to identify a person? Simply your name. God made you. God knows you. Different from any other person. And at baptism, God calls you by name and says once and for all, I know you. You are mine. Here now is the full song, Be Not Afraid. You shall not die of thirst You shall wander far in safety Though you do not know the way You shall speak your words in foreign lands And all will understand You shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go before
Christ is the bread of life, and he comes to us again and again, no matter how many times we have been nourished at this table. This is the feast of all God's people, from every race and nation, from every age and living condition. People will come from east and west and north and south and sit at table in the kingdom of God. Come and taste, eat and be filled, drink deep and never thirst again. I declare to you, all are welcome at this table. If you have not gotten some elements for you to participate at home with, I invite you to pause, go get some bread and something to drink, and we will meet back here at the table. Please join me in the great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, we acknowledge your lordship over the world that you have made and over the creatures you have placed in it. You have filled us with the light of Christ. You have led us in days past, and you lead us into new adventures, into a future that is filled with possibilities. Your goodness and your work for the redemption of all creation is unending. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the faithful of every time and place who forever sing the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you thanks, O God, for making your love evident since the very beginning of time when you spoke the word which replaced the darkness of chaos with life-giving light, a light which has nurtured generations of people and plants and creatures great and small. Fill us now with your Holy Spirit in this meal, in the week to come and throughout all of eternity, that we may celebrate your grace so freely given. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. It was on the night in which Jesus was delivered to the authorities by those he loved that he sat at table with them and he took bread and after giving thanks to God for it, he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this, remembering me. And in the same way, he took the cup after supper and after giving thanks to God for it, he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Friends, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's saving death until he comes again in glory. All are welcome at this table. O oh, taste and see how gracious the Lord is. Blessed are all who trust in God. Jesus said, I am the vine, 
You are the branches. Cut off from me, you can do nothing. But with God, all things are possible. Let us turn to God in prayer. Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament. We thank you for uniting us with Christ and giving us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet of your eternal kingdom. Send us out in the power of your spirit and empower us to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Hear now our charge and benediction. May God, who created us in the divine image, send us forth to reflect the presence of our Creator to everyone we meet. May Jesus, who has redeemed us, establish God's peace in our midst and bring healing to this broken world. May God, the Holy Spirit, who calls us to be God's people, go with us to many places, that we may tear down walls that divide us, that we may build lives of hope for all of God's children. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.